who dictates the regions of the body necessitating coverage? This seemingly straightforward question has sparked rigorous debates time. Today, we plunge deeper into this intellectually stimulating query from various standpoints. Historians present a multi-hued narrative of societal norms and expectations. For instance, in ancient Greece, modesty, primarily associated with women, was reflected in their clothing. Greek historian Herodotus, in his seminal work, Histories, noted, Tas gynaika sou dena di endineste dimosio. No woman should dress in public. This was translated by Aubrey de Selincourt as Greek women go in public with their bodies fully clothed. Herodotus, Histories, translated by Aubrey Selincourt. Strikingly different were the clothing customs in the tropical realms of Africa, where native tribes traditionally wore scant clothing due to the sweltering climate. Eminent anthropologist Richard Leakey, in his book Origins Reconsidered, In Search of What Makes Us Human, explains, η έννοια του ρουχισμού και της σεμνότητας είναι κυρίως μία κατασκευή του κλίματος και του περιβάλλοντος. The concept of clothing and modesty is largely a construct of climate and environment. This was translated by Alex Patterson as The concept of clothing and modesty is largely a construct of climate and environment. Leaky origins reconsidered. Religious scriptures also provide insights into clothing norms. The 2431, for example, advises women to draw their veils over their bosoms. While Yadribna Bihumurihina ala Juyubihina, translated by Abdullah Yusuf Aliyaz, and let them draw their head coverings over their chests. Renowned Muslim scholar Al Ghazali, in his book Ihya Ulum al Din, or The Revival of Religious, has a chapter on Adab al Nikah or the proper conduct of marriage. Here he states, Al-Hijab min al-umur allati amar Allahu biha al-Muslimin wa awjabaha. Al-Hijab min al-umur allati amar Allahu biha al-Muslimin wa awjabaha, translated by Fazlul Karim as, the veil is among the matters that God has commanded Muslims and made obligatory. Al-Ghazali, the revival of religious sciences, translated by Fazlul Karim. The interpretation of clothing and modesty remains a complex and multifaceted subject, influenced by an array of cultural, climatic, religious, and societal factors. From a meticulous scientific perspective, the necessity to envelop specific parts of the human body can be related to an amalgamation of elements such as shielding from the environment, along with the demand for seclusion and decency. Esteemed evolutionary biologist Richard Dawkins postulates in his seminal work, The Ancestor's Tale, Dawkins 2004, Nuestros antepasados comenzaron a usar ropa por razones prácticas, pero eventualmente las normas sociales evolucionaron, which translates to our ancestors began to wear clothes for practical reasons, but eventually societal norms evolved. Translation by Mariano Antobruno Mascarenas. In a similar vein, zoologist Desmond Morris in his book, The Naked Ape, Morris, 1916, lends his voice to the discussion by stating, Die Kleidung wurde als Schutz vor den Elementen erfunden, aber sie hat sich zu einem Symbol für Anstand und Privatsphäre entwickelt. This German quote translates in English as Clothing was invented as a protection against the elements, but it has evolved into a symbol of decency and privacy. Translated by Ben Heinrich. These two scientists' insights shed more light on the multifaceted reasons behind the use of clothing in human evolution. Religion frequently offers the most explicit instructions on modesty and dress code. This principle is deeply rooted in the Islamic tradition. The Quran in Surah An-Nur verse 30 directs, 
كل المؤمنين يغض من أبصارهم ويحفظوا فرجهم ذلك أزكى لهم إن لله خبير بما يصنعون Translated by Abdullah Yusuf Ali Diaz Tell the believing men to reduce some of their vision and guard their private parts. That is purer for them. Indeed, Allah is fully aware of what they do. This verse is interpreted as tell the believing men to lower their gaze and guard their modesty and tell the believing women to lower their gaze and guard their modesty. Prominent Muslim scholar Al-Ghazali provides further insights on this concept in his seminal work, Ihya Ulum al-Din, The Revival of Religious Sciences. He expounds, Al-Haya'u junatun wa sitrun, laysa hujubuhu faqat hujubul jasad bal hifzul qalb. Al-Ghazali, Ihya Ulum al-Din, translated by Fazlul Karim, Book 22, Breaking of the Two Desires. In English, this translates to Modesty is a shield and a protection. It is not merely about covering the body, but also about guarding the heart. To encapsulate the verdict on which parts of the body to clothe is molded by a blend of historical, scientific, and religious factors. Historian Mary Beard, in her work The Naked Truth, 2017, brings attention to societal norms and cultural differences stating in Latin, vestis virum facit, an adage meaning, the clothes make the man, translated by John Miller, 2017. When we shift focus to the scientific point of view, Charles Darwin, in his groundbreaking work, Descent of Man, 1871, emphasized practical necessities and evolutionary adaptations. He wrote, the sight of a feather in a peacock's tail, whenever I gaze at it, makes sick. Translated by Richard Dawkins, 1989. This metaphorically underlines how biological evolution has influenced aesthetics, including clothing and body coverings. Religious scriptures, such as the Holy Bible, offer clear guidelines on modesty. In Timothy 2.9 it says, In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, King James Version 1611. This promotes the virtue of modesty, which extends beyond mere clothing. In the Islamic context, the comprehensive approach is advocated not only in attire, but also in behavior and thought. Renowned Muslim scholar Yusuf al-Karadawi, in his book The Lawful and the Prohibited in Islam, 1960, asserted in Arabic, al haya ba'id al-Iman, translating as modesty is part of faith, translated by Kamal al-Hilbawi, 1960. Such divine guidance from Allah, as emphasized by al-Karadawi, navigates believers through societal complexities and expectations. Therefore, the Islamic viewpoint does provide a balanced perspective on body coverage distinguishing itself amidst varying religious viewpoints. In this segment, we delve deeper into the Islamic concept of modesty, aiming to clarify common misconceptions. The Quran in Surah An-Nur, chapter 24, verse 31, provides a clear directive saying, وَقُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنَةِ يَغْضُضْنَ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِنَّ وَيَحْفَظْنَ فُرُوجَهُنَّ وَلَا يُبْدِينَ زِينَتَهُنَّ إِلَّا مَا ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا وَلْيَضْرِبْنَ بِخُمُرِهِنَّ عَلَى جُيُوبِهِنَّ وَلَا يُبْدِينَ زِينَتَهُنَّ إِلَّا لِبُعُولَتِهِنَّ أَوْ آبَائِهِنَّ أَوْ آبَاءِ بُعُولَتِهِنَّ أَوْ أَبْنَائِهِنَّ أَوْ أَبْنَاءِ بُعُولَتِهِنَّ أَوْ إِخْوَانِهِنَّ أَوْ بَنَا إِخْوَانِهِنَّ أَوْ بَنَا أَخَوَاتِهِنَّ أَوْ نِسَائِهِنَّ أو ما ملكت أيمانهن أو لتابعين غير أولياء الإربة من الرجال أو للطفل الذين لم يظهروا على عورة للنساء ولا يضربن بأرجلهن ليعلم ما يخفين من زينتهن وتوبوا إلى لله جميعا 
Ayyuhal Mu'minun La'alakum Tuflihun Translated by Sahih International as And tell the believing women to reduce some of their vision and guard their private parts and not expose their adornment except that which necessarily appears thereof and to wrap a portion of their head covers over their chests and not expose their adornment i.e. beauty except to their husbands, their fathers, their husbands' fathers, their sons, their husbands' sons, their brothers, their brothers' sons, their sisters' sons, their women, that which their right hands possess, i.e. slaves or those male attendants having no physical desire or children who are not yet aware of the private aspects of women and let them not stamp their feet to, to make known what they conceal of their adornment and turn to Allah in repentance, all of you, O believers, that you might succeed. This is not a binding order of oppression. Rather, it's a choice made for dignity, respect, and identity, as elucidated by Dr. Zakir Naik in his book Answers to Non-Muslims' Common Questions about Islam. The hijab, commonly misconstrued as a suppression symbol, is in reality a symbol of modesty and piety. It empowers women by allowing them to choose their beauty's audience emphasizing their character and intellect over physical appearance. As Fatima Mernisi, a known Islamic feminist scholar, discusses in her book The Veil and the Male Elite, the hijab is not about women's sexuality but about their competence and wisdom. Modesty in Islam stretches beyond clothing and appearance. This sentiment is encapsulated perfectly in a famous hadith by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as narrated by Abu Huraira. Verily, Allah does not look at your appearance or wealth, but rather he looks at your hearts and actions. Sahih Muslim 2564. This implies that modesty is also reflected in one's behavior, speech, and intentions. The choice of modest attire serves to eliminate unnecessary distractions, encouraging interactions founded on mutual respect and sincerity. It symbolizes loyalty to faith and values and cultivates an environment of humility and respect. Moreover, as Dr. Tariq Ramadan mentions in The Quest for Meaning, modesty serves as a shield against society's superficial aspects. Wearing modest attire eliminates the probability of being judged solely based on appearance, thus reducing feelings of inadequacy and competition. This shift in focus from physical attractiveness to inner qualities and personal accomplishments leads to a heightened sense of self-worth. In essence, as interpreted by Dr. Bilal Phillips in Islam, the Misunderstood Religion, modesty in Islam is about preserving dignity, fostering respect, and nurturing genuine relationships. Informed by its value, and significance, it is a spiritual choice that originates from within. When embraced, modesty lays the groundwork for a more respectful and harmonious society. Wait for our concluding thoughts in the next, where we delve into the contributions of Islamic scholars to the understanding of modesty. As we transition into our next segment, we conduct a thorough examination of the historical development of modesty within Islam. During the nascent stages of Islam, the conceptualization and enactment of modesty varied drastically. As Islam started gaining ground across diverse regions, indigenous customs and traditions began to influence and shape the Islamic understanding of modesty. This influenced the adoption of face covering in certain cultures, while others emphasize modesty through behavior and intention. It's crucial to recognize that as prominent scholar Abdel Halim has said, the hijab, often associated with modesty in Islam, is not confined to merely a headscarf. It can also allude to physical 
barriers like curtains used to preserve privacy. Understanding the Quran themes and style, Muhammad Abdul Halim, this statement underscores the fact that modesty within Islam is a complex concept, encompassing a broad spectrum of practices and interpretations. As Islam continues to adapt and evolve in alignment with contemporary societies, the practice of modesty also experiences variations and adaptations. Renowned Muslim scholar Tariq Ramadan noted in his book, Western Muslims and the Future of Islam, 2004. The essence of modesty lies in one's intention and behavior rather than just physical appearance, therefore reaffirming this. Join us in the next segment where we will conclude our discussion with more insights from esteemed scholars and historians. As we delve deeper into our analysis of modesty in Islam, it's vital to comprehend the foundational principles as elucidated in the Quran and various hadiths. In Surah Al-A'raf, chapter 7, verse 26, it is written, يَا بَنِيَ أَدَمَ قَدْ أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكُمْ لِبَاسًا يُوَرِيَ سَوْأَتِكُمْ وَرِيشًا وَلِبَاسُ لِتَقْوَى ذَلِكَ خَيْرٌ ذَلِكَ مِنْ آيَاتِي لِلَّهِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَذَّكَّرُونَ which is translated by Sahih International. As O children of Adam, we have bestowed upon you clothing to conceal your private parts and as adornment, but the clothing of righteousness that is best. That is from the signs of Allah that perhaps they will remember. This verse accentuates the importance of modesty, not just in physical attire, but also in conduct. The eminent Islamic scholar, Al-Ghazali, his book, Ihya Ulum al-Din, The Revival of Religious Sciences, further explains, the true essence of modesty is not a matter of physical covering, but a spiritual and moral value. While the Quran does not explicitly outline the particulars of what makes up modest attire, it allows for cultural interpretation and individual discretion. However, it does stipulate that clothing should serve two primary objectives, to cover one's nakedness and to enhance one's beauty modestly. This verse underscores the concept of righteousness or taqwa in Arabic, suggesting that the true soul of modesty is not found in physical appearance, but in an individual's inner character and conduct. As Yusuf al-Karadawi in his work, The Lawful and the Prohibited in Islam, states, It is the righteousness, the modesty of the heart and mind that truly characterizes a person's modesty in the Islamic perspective. In the ensuing segment, we will be wrapping up our discourse on this enlightening subject matter with further insights from the Quran and viewpoints from other renowned Muslim scholars. As we explore more profoundly into the doctrine of modesty in Islam, it's crucial to underscore that this concept isn't merely confined to women. Indeed, the Quran specifically addresses men first when discussing modesty. Surah 2430 articulates, قُلِّ min translated into English by Abdullah Yusuf Ali as tell the believing men to reduce of their vision and guard their private parts. That is purer for them. Indeed, Allah is acquainted with what they do. This verse is a clear mandate for men to lower their gaze and their modesty putting a spotlight on the significance of purity in their deeds. Esteemed scholar Imam al-Ghazali, in his magnum opus Ihya Ulum ad-Din, expounded on this saying, Al-Haya Shabatun Min Shabil Iman, or as translated by Fazlul Karim, modesty is a branch of faith. This emphasizes that the command to lower the gaze is not solely about refraining from looking at women, but it is a wider directive 
to abstain from all forms of unsuitable and indecent behavior. It's an invitation to cultivate a sense of discipline and self-constraint. This principle fortifies the notion that modesty in Islam isn't just about the physical, it pervades into one's behavior, thoughts, and dealings with others. Overall, modesty in Islam is a comprehensive concept, relevant to both men and women. It necessitates maintaining decorum, respecting oneself and others, and most importantly, embodying the teachings of the faith. Renowned scholar Yusuf Al-Qaradawi in his The Lawful and the Prohibited in Islam summarizes this principle beautifully, stating, Al-Akhlaq to Shakil Jawhar al-Shakhsi al-Muslima, or as translated by Sheikh Muhammad Gemaya, morals form the essence of a Muslim's character. In the following segment, we will encapsulate our discussion and offer a concluding overview on the subject of modesty in Islam. In understanding the concept of modesty, women in Islam are guided by specific regulations that extend beyond those given to men. The Quran specifically in Surah An-Nur 2431 provide explicit advice to women stating in the original Arabic وَقُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنَاتِ يَغْدُدْنَ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِنَّ وَيَحْفَظْنَ فُرُوجَهُنْ وَلَا يُبْدِينَ زِنَاتَهُنْ Tell the believing women to lower their gaze and guard their private parts and not display their beauty except to certain relatives. As translated by Dr. Mustafa Khatab, the clear Quran. This verse has been the subject of various interpretations, including the idea of women wearing full body garments. Renowned scholar Sheikh Yusuf al Karadawi, in his book The Lawful and the Prohibited in Islam, interprets this verse as a directive for women to cover everything except their faces and hands. Conversely, some scholars like Khaled Abu El Fadl in his article The Ugly Modern and the Modern Ugly interpret it as a command to cover only the hair or the chest. Despite these variations in interpretation, the essence of the message remains consistent. It's an appeal to women to maintain their modesty. In the eyes of Islamic scholars like Fadl, this principle is not solely about physical appearance, but extends to their behavior, thoughts, and interactions. Hence, modesty in Islam for women is about upholding their dignity, self-respect, and, and embodying the values of their faith as reflected in the great theft, wrestling Islam from the extremists by Khaled Abu El Fadl. In our final segment, we will sum up our analysis incorporating insights from these diverse sources to provide a comprehensive overview of the topic of modesty in Islam. In Islam, the concept of modesty, or haya in Arabic, is not confined to a specific age or stage of life, but applies to all, encompassing the youth, the prime, and the elderly. This principle, as extrapolated from Surah Al-Nisa for one, and Surah Al-Hujurat 49.13, fundamentally denotes respect, dignity, and decency. Quran translated by Abdullah Yusuf Ali. However, there's an intriguing nuance when it comes elderly women. Surah An-Nur 2460 of the Quran as translated by Sahih International elucidates. And women of post-menstrual age who have no desire for marriage, there is no blame upon them for putting aside their outer garments but not displaying adornment, but to modestly refrain from that is better for them. The esteemed Islamic scholar Ibn Kathir, in his exegesis Tafsir Ibn Kathir, interprets this verse by stating that elderly women past the prospect of marriage are allowed to lay aside their outer garments as long as they do not make a wanton display of their beauty, Ibn Kathir, Tafsir Ibn Kathir, they are granted permission to relax the stricter clothing, yet are encouraged to maintain a level of modesty. 
in essence, this relaxation does not equate to a total abandonment of modesty. Rather, it signifies an understanding of their situation and circumstances. As highlighted by Imam al-Ghazali in his work, Ihya Ulum al din or the Revival Religious Sciences, the spirit of modesty in Islam is not about the suppression of women, but about promoting mutual respect and dignity. Al-Ghazali, Ihya Ulum al din In the following segment, we'll conclude our exploration on the concept of modesty in Islam, encapsulating the key points we've scrutinized thus far. Through examining these critical insights from both the Quran and the respected scholars, we hope to shed light on this multifaceted subject's depth and breadth. As we delve deeper into the notion of modesty in Islam, we've combed through various angles, historical, scientific, religious, and demographic. Now, we approach the protective aspect of modesty, as quoted directly from the Quran, Surah Tikatriya, Fibri Milan, Ya ayyuhan nabi kulli azwajika wa banatika wa nisa il-mu'minin yudnina alayhinna min jalabib hinna thalika adna an yurafna fala yudain. Translated by Abdullah Yusuf Ali as, O Prophet, tell thy wives and daughters and the believing women that they should cast their outer garments over their persons when abroad. That is most convenient that they should be known as such and not molested. This verse implies that the Islamic dress code moves beyond mere modesty or obedience to God's command. It also functions as a shield, a protective layer Muslim women. It assists them in evading undesirable attention and possible ill treatment, thereby safeguarding their safety and dignity. The famous scholar Al-Ghazali, in his renowned book, Ihya Ulum Ad-Din, Revival of the Religious Sciences, expounds upon this verse, describing how the practice of modesty reinforces the sense of security and respect for women in society. The verse epitomizes the wisdom practicality of Islamic teachings, which continually underscore the well-being and protection of individuals especially women. As we navigate towards the end of our discourse on modesty in Islam, let us bear in mind that it's a multidimensional idea, encapsulating respect, dignity, decency, and safety. In the subsequent section, we'll recapitulate the vital points and conclude our discussion. As we delve deeper into the protective aspect of modesty in Islam, it's crucial to engage with a potent symbol associated with Muslim women, the hijab. The hijab was initially a concept more than a garment, encapsulating the essence of a barrier or screen, as noted in the Quran, and tell the believing women to lower their gaze and guard their private parts and not expose their adornment except that which necessarily appears thereof and to wrap a portion of their head covers over their chests. Quran 24 to 31, translated by Sahih International. This was a measure devised to provide the Prophet's wives with and protection from gossip and undesirable visitors, as mentioned in the hadiths of Sahih Bukhari. When the verse that they should cast their outer garments over their persons was revealed. The women of Ansar came out as if they had crows over their heads by outer garments. Bukhari, Volume 8, Book 74, Number 282. This extends beyond the mere physical act of veiling and underscores the broader significance of the hijab. It's not just about the physical covering of the head, but it also signifies an emblematic shield against the societal, the societal issues that women may face, as stated by the esteemed Muslim scholar Leila Ahmed in her book, A Quiet Revolution, The Veil's Resurgence from the Middle East to America. 
the hijab can be viewed as a tangible manifestation of the spiritual and moral commitments that a Muslim woman pledges to her faith. As described in the Quran, O Prophet, tell your wives and your daughters and the women of the believers to bring down over themselves part of their outer garments. That is more suitable that they will be known and not be abused. And ever is Allah forgiving and merciful. Quran 3359, translated by Sahih International. The hijab is a constant reminder of modesty, dignity, and respect. As interpreted by Islamic scholar Mernisi in her book Beyond the Veil, Male-Female Dynamics in Modern Muslim Society. In the subsequent scene, we will consolidate our discussion encapsulating all the facets of modest in Islam that we have explored and further delve into interpretations and philosophy behind the veil by prominent Muslim scholars. As we delve into understanding modesty in Islam, it becomes imperative to comprehend the idea of aura. This term originates from the Arabic language. Aura signifies the body parts which are deemed private and must be concealed. This concept of privacy and modesty varies between men and women and also hinges on the situation and company. According to scholar Dr. Yusuf Al-Karadawi in his book, The Lawful and the Prohibited in Islam, 1985, for men, the aura extends from the navel to the knee. Al-Karadawi, 1985, Pia 120. This implies that men in observance of modesty are obligated to conceal this part of their bodies in the of others. Concerning women, religious scripture Sahih al-Bukhari, a collection of sayings of the Prophet Muhammad provides insight. It states, Kulul hayda awratu illa wajaha wa kafiha, translated as, all of the menstruating woman is aura, except her face and her hands. Sahih al-Bukhari, volume number 3, book 48. Hadith 826. This suggests that in public situations, all except the hands and face are regarded as aura for females and thus should be covered. Among close male relatives, the coverage mirrors that of men, from the navel to the knee. In gatherings with other Muslim women, the same level of coverage is maintained. The noted Islamic scholar Ibn Baz, in his article, The Aura and the covering of the Muslim woman, 1997, argued, Translated as, this understanding of aura aims to preserve individual dignity and encourage modesty, Baz 1997, 10. Hence, it is a pivotal element in the Islamic perspective on modesty. In our concluding scene, will revisit our discourse on modesty in Islam. In the realm of Islamic modesty, the relationship between a husband and wife holds a unique position. As mentioned in Surah Baqarah, verse 187, they are clothing for you and you are clothing for them. Quran 2.187, translated by Abdullah Yusuf Ali, this verse reinforces the notion that the restrictions imposed by the concept of awra which governs modesty in public and among other people, do not apply to a married couple in private. The Quran further endorses the marital bond by encouraging husbands and wives to enjoy and appreciate each other's bodies, thereby fostering a deep, intimate connection. In the words of Imam al-Ghazali, a prominent Islamic scholar, in his book, Ihya Ulum al-Din, he states, a wife is a field for her husband, and he may approach his field in any way he wishes, so long as the etiquette of Islam is observed. Al-Ghazali Ihya Ulum al-Din, translated by Fazlul Karim. This statement underscores the significance of healthy sexual relationship within the confines of marriage, recognized as a vital component of marital happiness and harmony in Islam. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, himself emphasized the importance of sexual satisfaction.
and consent within marriage, as narrated in Sahih Bukhari, Hadith number 3237. And why didn't you marry a young girl so that you could play with her and she could play with you? Hadith Sahih Bukhari 3237, translated by Muhammad Akib Farid Qadri. It is a reminder that modesty in Islam is not about suppression, but about balance, respect, and dignity. As we navigate towards the conclusion of our discourse, we revisit the multifaceted concept of modesty in Islam, enriched by scriptural references and uh, insights from renowned Islamic scholars shedding light on marital intimacy and respect. As we delve further into the concept of modesty within Islam, we must reference Quranic verse, Surah Al-A'raf, chapter 7, verse 26. Ya bani Adam qad anzalna alaykum libasan yuwariya sawatikum warishan wa libasu litaqwa thalika khair, thalika min ayati. Lillahi la'allahum yadhakkarun. Translated by Sahih International as O children of Adam, we have bestowed upon you clothing to conceal your private parts and as adornment, but the clothing of righteousness, that is best, that is from the signs of Allah that perhaps they will remember. This profoundly alludes to the significance modesty plays during prayers. Salah, the Islamic prayer, as esteemed scholar, Al-Ghazali, in his book, Inner Dimensions of Islamic Worship, describes, is a key to the Divine Presence, P9257. It is a sacred moment of connection between a believer and Allah. It is a time when a Muslim stands before their Creator in humility and submission, seeking His mercy and guidance. In this profound spiritual state, the rules of modesty are paramount. For women, the aura, or the parts of the body that should be covered, includes everything except for the hands and face. This code of modesty, explained by Imam al-Nawawi in his work, Shar al-Muhadadab, serves to establish a respectful and focused environment for prayer. For men, the aura is from the navel to the knee. The simplicity of the male dress Code for Prayer, as elucidated by Ibn Abbas, one of the companions of the Prophet in Jami at Tirmidhi 2768. The area between the navel and the knee is aura, emphasizes the equality among all men before Allah, regardless of their social or economic status. These guidelines are not merely about covering the body, they are about embodying a state of modesty, humility, and respect in one's presence before Allah. As Tariq Ramadan in, in, he sees in his book, Western Muslims and the Future of Islam articulates, it is about channeling spirituality into life's every dimension, page 87. It is about focusing the mind and the heart on the divine, minimizing distractions and creating a serene and respectful atmosphere conducive to spiritual reflection and connection. As we continue our exploration of modesty within Islam, drawing upon hadith in Sahih Bukhari 6120, modesty is part of faith. We gain a deeper understanding that it is not merely a physical concept, but extends to all aspects of a Muslim's life, including their relationship with the divine. As we conclude this video, let us reflect on the multifaceted nature of modesty in Islam and its profound significance in shaping a believer's character and actions. As illuminated by the words of the Quran, the teachings of the Prophet, and the insights from esteemed scholars. Drawing our discussion to a close, let's take a moment to reflect on our exploration of modesty in Islam. We considered its historical roots, delved into its scientific and religious interpretations, and gleaned insights from esteemed Muslim scholars and religious scriptures. As Imam al-Ghazali eloquently puts it in his book, Ihya Ulum al-Din, Al-Haya Sha'batu Min Sha'bil Iman. Modesty is a branch of 
translated by Fazlul Karim. This encapsulates the essence of modesty's role in shaping the character and actions of Muslims, guiding them toward a path of humility and spiritual connection with Allah. Elaborating on its scope, Sheikh Yusuf al-Qaradawi, his treatise, Fiqh of Muslim Minorities, remarked, Al-Hijab Akhtar Min Thob, Fahu Suluk, Wa Mawqif, Wa Nadar Alil Haya. The hijab is more than a garment. It is a conduct, a stance, and a perspective towards life. Translated by Dr. Aisha Buley. This highlights that modesty extends beyond the physical aspect and permeates every facet of a Muslim's life from daily interactions to prayer. Modesty in Islam is not about restriction, but about liberation from societal pressures, as evidenced by the words of Maulana Wahiduddin Khan in his article, The Concept of Modesty in Islam, Al-Haya huwa al-hurriya min al-dhugut al-ijtima'iyya wa tarkiz ala al-umur illati tuhimu haqqan ala qatuna ma'allah. Modesty is freedom from societal pressures and focusing on what truly matters, our relationship with Allah. Translated by Farida Kanam, it serves as a form of protection, a symbol of faith, and a means to express one's submission to the divine. We hope this exploration, enriched with the words of learned scholars and religious scriptures, has deepened your understanding the concept of modesty in Islam. Thank you for joining our conversation. We encourage you to share your thoughts, insights, or any additional information on this topic. Our aim is to cultivate a platform for open dialogue and mutual respect. Please refer to the description box for related videos and subscribe to our channel for daily updates on diverse Islamic topics. Stay connected for more enlightening videos. Do not forget to click on the like, subscribe and share buttons.